I've been farming for 53 years, and in those years I've grown uh, mostly wheat, canola, oats, and peas. This field has had wheat, and, and the field behind me has canola in it, or rapeseed as it is known in Europe. When our grandparents came to this country, there was no such thing as chemical companies or seed companies, and they had to rely and develop their own seed, borrow seed from their neighbors, or bring it from Europe with them. Percy was known in this part of Canada as a seed developer and a seed saver. I would say that our best grains, our best seeds, have not been developed by research people or scientists. They have been developed by farmers. In 1997, Percy sprayed Monsanto's Roundup around the power poles and ditches as he had done for years. Some canola plants did not die. I thought initially that some of those plants didn't die because I had been spraying year after year after year with Roundup in the same area, and companies warn you you shouldn't spray every year because you could develop a resistance. Monsanto found out about it, and they went on my land that I farm without my knowledge, without my permission, and took plants or seeds and said some of that was Monsanto's Roundup Ready canola. In August the 6th of 1998, they launched a lawsuit against me. Monsanto claimed that Percy had illegally obtained their genetically modified canola without a license and had infringed on their patent. Patents historically have been for things like, I've used the example of a carburetor. Well, a carburetor doesn't get up one day and start replicating itself everywhere and introducing itself into your car so that all of a sudden you have somebody else's carburetor one morning and then you get sued for patent infringement. So that's the unique nature of this type of technology that uh, once you've unleashed it into the environment, uncontrolled and unconfined, it will spread everywhere. Before the main trial, Monsanto withdrew then all their allegations against me that I had ever obtained a seat illegally. And they went on to say that it didn't matter how the seed got on to my land, I still infringed on their patent. Because my land is on the east side of the road, the main road, the prevailing winds here are from the west. So it would be natural for the canola that blew off of trucks to land in the field here. In fact, one farmer uh, told me that when he drove past my land uh, hauling a Roundup Ready canola, his tarp had broken and he estimated he lost enough past my two miles of land to see 2,000 acres. Well, I think one of the uh, biggest issues in the case is uh, where to draw the line between the people and the companies who produce and come up with this new technology. The line ended up being drawn way into the farmer's fields. And our contention was the line should clearly be drawn such that farmers have a right to continue to farm they should be able to save and reuse their own seed. They should be able to buy seed, conventional seed, from their neighbors as they've had in the past without having to worry about uh, whether they're infringing somebody's patent now. 1999, when I went to uh, seed uh, my canola fields, I was advised by my lawyer not to use my own seed again because I now knew it was contaminated by Monsanto's genetic altered canola. And it was seed that was adapted to this region and grew quite well because it was resistant to various diseases. Percy destroyed over 1,000 pounds of seed that he and his wife had developed over decades. The lawsuit and my loss of my seeds was the hardest thing that could have ever happened to us. Now here, Montana comes along. What we worked for all these years, they just want to take it away just like that from us. I could never do that. To, the, uh, to go into their office and take anything, I would be prosecuted. And they can just come and, and do anything to the farmers, just like they, they, own, they own them or so, which really is upsetting. And I feel they took my rights away and my privacy. And we're not the only ones they've been doing to as many others. Why are they prosecuting so many of these little farmers when they only mean worth a couple of hundred thousand when they're such a multinational company? Why? 
is it greed or is it they just want to control all the seeds? Percy was not the only farmer accused by Monsanto. In the summer of 2000, my family and I were uh, discussing how rude we thought it was that uh, Monsanto never sent us a letter or thanked us for cooperating with their investigation into our business. We were stunned when in late July of the year 2000, we received a letter from a law firm in New Orleans that was representing Monsanto Company, accusing us of uh, infringing on their patent. Uh, every accused grower in the United States that I have talked to had nearly identical stories. They come and test your crop. The farmers that have nothing to hide figure, well, they'll find that we didn't plant this crop that they say, and uh, they come back over a year later and accuse you of this when the, when the farmer can't go back and take crop samples and disprove them. Monsanto had told us that they had sampled all 3,850 acres of our soybean crop. The samplers would have had to have been gathering one sample continuously every 20 seconds. After examining the testimony that we gave, realized their story didn't add up. Now they changed their story, saying they only took a handful of samples per field. Are we to assume that uh, they were lying in their first attempt to extort money from us, or are they lying now? Estimates are that Monsanto has sent out 9,000 letters to farmers. Most farmers choose to pay to avoid lawsuits. Even so, there are 100 active lawsuits in the United States alone. When the farmers do settle with Monsanto, they have to agree to never discuss their settlement. Uh, we feel that we were profiled by Monsanto because of the size of our farm and uh, that uh, they wanted to try to make an example out of us to scare other farmers into never saving their own seed, to be too scared to save their own seed. Eventually, my case went to court after two and a half years, and Monsanto dragged me through those courts in pre-trial. They did everything to break me. They basically took all of our retirement funds because just my lawyer fees alone, up to date, have been by $200,000. One of the sons said, Mom and Dad, I hope it won't get you down because they're trying to destroy you. But I hope you're strong and you just get through it all. He says, that's the only way the changes will be made in, in our country with these big companies. Monsanto ready to wage war. Schmeiser's case opened the door for Monsanto to pursue other patent breaches. A lot of people have asked me um, why I didn't just settle. I probably could have settled for maybe a slap on the wrist or maybe a few thousand dollars fine. But what uh, I did was talk it over with my wife and said, look, they destroyed our seed, everything we've worked for in the last 50 years. And, our, and if I sign this, that, uh, that I grew genetic altered canola without a license when we were doing our own thing, minding my own business, I couldn't live with myself. And I feel that it was taking my fundamental rights away from me. My grandparents left a system like that way back at the turn of the century to get away from control in a feudal type system. Are we going to want to go back to that? And I, we said no. We'll fight it and stand up for what we believe in. And what did the judge rule after two and a half weeks of trial? He said it didn't matter how Monsanto's genetic altered canola got into my field. And then he went on and specified. He said whether it cross-pollinated or if it blew in by the wind, by birds, bees, animals, or falling off a farmer's truck, a combine, and so on, it didn't matter. The fact that there were some plants there, I violated Monsanto's patent, even though I didn't want it in my field. Number two, which is the most important one, I think, he ruled any farmer that has a regular conventional plant. It doesn't matter what kind of plant, if it's a tree, if it's a seed, and it gets cross-pollinated with Monsanto's gene against your wishes and destroys your property, 
my plant becomes Monsanto's property. Now stop and think what that means to farmers all over the world, farmers, gardeners, anything to do with a life-giving farm. The third issue he ruled, the fact that I never used Monsanto's patent, which means I never used Monsanto's Roundup Ready herbicide or glyphosate on my crop, he ruled that's immaterial. He said the fact was that there were some plants there. So that shows you the power of patent law over farmers' rights. If you go and look at a canola field that's one half GMO, one half regular canola, you will not be able to tell the difference between the two. They grow the same, they act the same. The only way you'll be able to discover it's there is if you go spray Roundup. Well, what you killed is your own, and what survived belongs to Monsanto now as a result of this case.